What's up everybody, Brian Peacock back once again at the Outdoor Adventures, another gardening tip. Uh, this is Zucchini and Squash 101, alright, uh, a lot of you guys that I've been talking to in some of my groups are having some trouble or misunderstanding uh, how Zucchini grows and how Squash grows. Uh, zucchini is just another squash, uh, you know, but uh, this here is a yellow squash, and uh, I believe this is a cricket net uh, yellow squash here. And uh, we'll look down in there. We got a lot of fruits growing. Okay, um, I use uh, 20 gallons containers um, with a uh, potting soil mix. Uh, do not use garden soil. Only potting soil, or make your own soil, which I do a lot myself. I use peat moss, I use perlite, I use sand, and I use compost in my uh, soil blends. Um, I also just uh, grab a bag or two of uh, potting soils um, and make sure that they are potting soils. I prefer soils that don't have um, nutrients in them. Although it's very hard to find uh, bagged soil without nutrients in it. Um, I, I like the kinds uh, um, without the so uh, nutrients so I can add my own nutrients. I am an organic grower and I use organic compost and I use organic fertilizer. Uh, I use uh, a brand called Dr. Earth. Uh, it's a dry amendment. Um, so you just... Uh, two tablespoons of uh, the dry amendment per gallon of soil and uh, just sprinkle it on the top mix it in with your hand and water that's it that's all you do once a month okay um, that's how that works all right so uh, here we have a, uh, a, a younger plant actually let's move it. here we have a younger plant okay uh, this one was planted uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I did start this one um, in uh, small trays, and uh, zucchini and squash tend to not like to be transplanted as much, although they can be transplanted, they just they stress out a little bit and uh, take about a week or so to get growing. Uh, it is better to direct sow the seed directly in the container or in the ground, um, but you can start these. Uh, beforehand um, I tend to start them because uh, just something to do in the house or whatever before the season gets ready to go but uh, this is a young plant and um, you can see how it's just starting to branch out all right they don't get as big in these five gallon buckets um, so I grow bush varieties here so this is actually a, uh, a white uh, patty pan squash um, and this doesn't get anywhere near as big as the uh, as the crooked necks and the uh, zucchinis, okay? So that's why I keep them in a, a smaller container. Now, let's come up here to the flowers. All right, squash flowers um, and squash plants have two different flowers. They have a male and they have a female, and they need to be pollinated in order to grow your fruits. All right, so the female flower will have the fruit on it, okay? This is the fruit before it was pollinated, and this one probably has been already pollinated because the flower has done closed up, or it missed the time to get pollinated, all right? Squash flowers are usually only open for one day, and that'll be early morning before the sun comes out, all right? Once the sun comes out, they'll close up, and that's it, okay? Uh, you can open that flower up, and hand pollinate and I would recommend uh, when you first get your blooms to hand pollinate your first few flowers um, because uh, you know the uh, the bees and the ants might not know that they're there yet and uh, it's just that way you can get your fruits pollinated uh, quickly all right so um, these are the female flower and this is the female flower open you can see these little, uh, a bunch of little things, and they have a, actually a center in it. 
and uh, this is the female flower, as you can see. Uh, it's got the fruit back here on it, okay? The male flower, which I don't see any of on this plant, there's one all the way down at the bottom, and here's one getting ready to open here, so I can probably find one on another plant, but here is a male flower getting ready to open. You can see that it has no fruit on it, it's just a stem up to the flower, and the male flower will have one knob in the middle, not a bunch of these uh, on the outside, okay, so it'll just be one solid knob in the middle, all right? come down here maybe there's a, a male in here here's a male uh, it's closed up from yesterday but I can probably open it up for you all right we're just gonna pluck this guy off and this is the male flower it's closed but uh, let's break it open here real quick let me try to hold this while I do this all right now what we want to do normally we would do this uh, when the flower is open Okay, and this one looks like the pollen is all gone. It's been washed off by the dew or rain. All right, so what we're gonna do is peel the flower back. Oh, you can't see, I'm trying to hold it at the same time. All right, we peeled the flower off. There's the single knob in the middle. See how it's just a single knob and not uh, a bunch of uh, ones in a circle. All right, this is what the pollen will stick to. And when it's fresh and just open, you'll see a bunch of little yellow powdery stuff all over that and it'll be all inside of there and uh, that's what the bees get stuck all over them when they come in and, and collect the nectar from this and um, bees are a huge uh, pollinator uh, I have uh, bumblebees and carpenter bees I have honey bees I have uh, all kinds of little tiny like sweat bees and things um, I have uh, all kinds of bees that come here and um, one of the reasons is I have a big flower bed right here you can see all the flowers, it's a mess right now. Done. But uh, these flowers bloom throughout the season. I have different ones. Uh, there's some yellow cone flowers, some comfrey. There's some milkweed down in here. Uh, it's just starting to bloom now. Um, Of course, hostas, I have uh, bachelor buttons. I have uh, chamomile down there, there's oregano. Uh, there's just a bunch of different uh, flowers here. And then of course, all the wild flowers and uh, all the dandelion that I leave. All right, so I leave all these plants grow, um, even in my yard, the dandelions and stuff, just to attract the bees. Once the flowers are gone, then I'll cut the grass and I'll cut them down. All right, but uh, back to the, the, the flower, okay? This is the male, all right? And, and to hand pollinate, you would come over here. Here's the female, all right? And here's the male, all right? Male has no fruit behind the flower female has a fruit behind the flower. All right, to hand pollinate, you're just gonna take that knob and you're just gonna rub it all over that female part down there. Kinda like, uh, kinda like humans do. <laughs> but that pollen will get on that flower and um, pollinate it. Once it's pollinated, that flower will close up to protect it and that fruit will grow. Okay, if it does not get pollinated today, that flower will still close up and that fruit will turn black and it will die and it will fall off and rot. Alright, so that's how you know if your, your fruits are rotting off and they're not getting big and they're, they're just turning black and falling off, that means that your fruits have not been pollinated. Alright, and this happens a lot early on when your plants first start blooming because most of the time the plant kicks out either a bunch of females and no males or a bunch of males and no females at first. Alright, and uh, that's why I plant several plants of each one because uh, they all bloom a little different and the more 
flowers and buds that you have popping um, allows more fertilization and pollinization, should I say, uh, to the flowers itself. So bees can definitely come up to this one, then come down to this one and pollinate it as well. All right, so I have zucchini over here, and you can tell the zucchini from the squash. Now, this zucchini, I can't remember, I think it's a uh, Black Beauty zucchini, I believe. And this is a cricket neck uh, squash. Now you can see how light these leaves are. We've had a lot of rain, and that's what this is. It's just rain damage. It just the heavy rains rip these leaves perfectly fine, perfectly okay. All right, but here is my zucchini plant. Now this is the Black Beauty. All right, these, this plant here has this white stuff all over it. All right, and uh, some will say, oh no, that's powdery mildew. Uh, these plants are very susceptible to powdery mildew. Um, if the leaves are kept wet for long periods of time, uh, powdery mildew will form on the leaves and it can kill your plants in the long run. Um, but the good thing is it can be prevented. All right, and uh, what I use is uh, about 10 to 12 tablespoons of uh, just regular hydrogen peroxide in the brown bottle. You buy it for like a buck at the store and I mix that with a, a gallon of water. So 10 to 12 tablespoons of peroxide with a gallon of water, spray tops and bottoms of leaves, stems, everything in there uh, twice a week and after heavy rains. And, and uh, peroxide is an antifungal, an antibacterial, and uh, uh, what else is it? Uh, anti, uh, Antifungal, antibacterial. It's a lot of things, but it it kills the uh, the, the fungus of the um, powdery mildew. Okay, uh, but this plant in particular has this white on the leaves naturally. Okay, and uh, this variety is uh, prone to fight powdery mildew pretty well. So there are different varieties um, that do better than others in certain areas. I live in western North Carolina. I live in a uh, subtropical rainforest. Um, I wake up every morning and everything is soaking wet from the dew, from the dew point being um, so cold at nights. Um, you know, we can have uh, mid 40s in the mornings um, and 90 degrees in the afternoon so we have a really big temperature swing here and uh, it's very wet climate very humid climate and a lot of rain and uh, it tends to have a toll on especially my tomatoes uh, not as much to squash and cucumbers they really like the water as long as you have a good draining soil and that is very important to have a good draining soil and that's the importance of the perlite and the peat moss um, and that's why you don't want garden soil. Garden soil is more like uh, bark and stuff like that in it. And, and uh, so you don't want to use that. Use a, a, uh, a potting soil, okay, if you're going to go out and buy it. Now, here is a zucchini. And you can see here that this zucchini pushed out all male flowers, okay? Males, 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 males everywhere. The other one pushed out all female flowers. They can go either way. Um, the zucchinis tend to do the males first, squash tend to do the females first. Alright, now, these can cross-pollinate. Alright, so uh, this zucchini plant could pollinate the squash plant over there and vice versa. Okay, and um, you can get a, uh, a mixture of, uh, of uh, a yellow squash and a, a green zucchini, which is kind of cool looking. Uh, like yellow zucchinis and things like that but um they can cross pollinate uh, but usually you don't see any of the difference until you save the seeds and you grow them next year all right so that's where you'll get that uh, peppers can do the same thing they can cross pollinate hot peppers can pollinate sweet peppers uh, they will not make them hot this year but if you save the seeds and use them next year you could have some hot sweet peppers because they may have been pollinated by your jalapenos or habaneros or whatever you're growing. So, um, all right, so we've covered the powdery mildew, we've covered 
the blossom ID uh, on how to pollinate your blossoms. All right, now another cool thing about squash blossoms and zucchini blossoms is that they are very edible. The blossoms themselves, okay? They're really good to eat. Um, you can actually fill them with a uh, cheese blend and um, dip them in a batter, like roll them up, close them up with the cheese inside, uh, dip them in a light batter, and deep fry them suckers. And let me tell you what, if you've never tried that, oh my goodness, they're so good. All right, so once you start getting a bunch of fruits and you start getting more blooms, you can take some of those flowers and you can eat them. So try that out, I'm telling you. You're gonna like it. All right, now, you can prune squash and zucchini plants, especially the, uh, the um, vine growing um, zucchini, which this is, or squash. Uh, this isn't a bush variety like my, my patty pants. So this will continually grow and grow and grow and grow. And eventually it gets heavy and it'll fall over the pot if you don't uh, hold it up. You can use a uh, tomato basket cages. Um, I tend to just use a couple pieces of bamboo. Um, I get on the side of the road, it's free. Uh, I try to cut as much cost in my garden as I possibly can, because uh, gardening is not cheap, all right? Um, it's probably cheaper to go buy food in the store than it is to garden, all right? Most of the time, at least when you first start out. Uh, once you start saving seeds and you reuse soils and and things like that it's not as big of a cost but it can be quite expensive to get going um, especially if you're doing containers and you're buying bags of soil all right bags of soil tend to be really expensive if you have a lot of containers um, like I do I have probably over 60 containers here uh, up to 20 gallon 5 gallon 10 and 15 gallons uh, so I use a lot of soil, all right? So if I were to go buy soil in bags, it would cost me hundreds of dollars in soil just to build these pots, all right? So the best thing to do if you have a big raised bed or you have a lot of things, you can go to a, um, a, a soil place uh, or a compost place and you can buy uh, a truckload, a, a ton or a half ton uh, of, um, of composted, a raised bed soil mix is really what you want all right you can buy just compost and topsoil if you want together uh, but they usually have a, a blend a mix just for raised beds uh, you, you can use that in your containers uh, but I would definitely add a little more peat moss and some definitely some perlite in there perlite is these little white things and little tiny little things that look like styrofoam in there it is not styrofoam um, it is called perlite and it has a lot of pores, uh, holes all through it, and it aerates the soil. It also can hold water a little bit, um, not as much as a vermiculite, but the perlite uh, definitely aerates the soil. It helps with drainage. It helps with getting oxygen to your roots, which is very important. Roots definitely need oxygen to grow. Okay, so um, there's eating the blossoms. All right, we've discussed. Um, strapping it to a cage or a stake um, so it doesn't fall over. Um, and then we want to prune off the bottom leaves, okay? Especially ones that have died off. See this one, it's dead and wilted. We're just gonna come down here close to the plant, pinch it off, get rid of it, throw it in our compost pile. All right, a couple blades of grass growing in here, which isn't a huge deal as long as it doesn't take over. We're gonna come down here, pop off this. I'm gonna pop off this big leaf right here. And uh, we're just going to keep pruning this down low. We're not taking off these top leaves, just the ones that are coming off the bottoms. All right. And pruning, what pruning will do for your plants is it will really help produce more fruits. All right. So as you prune, the plant's going to push out more uh, blossoms. All right. So, and that's what we want. We want blossoms. We don't want leaves. Okay. So there you go. I just prune that one up pretty good. Um, we're just going to throw all these in and collect them and put them in a compost pile in a little bit. Okay, we're going to come down here and I already pruned a couple of these. Uh, let's get this big one off right here. Um, another thing pruning does is it opens up the bottom and lets air flow through here. 
which prevents powdery mildew. It allows leaves and uh, things to dry out quicker. And um, it also opens the plant up to allow your bees and your ants and things like that to see the yellow. All right, yellow uh, blossoms are an attractor to a lot of pollinating bugs. Uh, as well as some harmful bugs as well, like a vine borer and things like that. Unfortunately, uh, here in Western North Carolina, I don't have, or I have not had a problem with vine borers. Um, but vine borers can be a very big hassle to uh, squash plants, especially. Um, they really love the squash plants. Um, they'll come down and they'll lay eggs on the bottom of a leaf and, um, see any we, we have uh, other things lay eggs as well and uh, that like to chew on things but um, I tend to uh, I don't use anything unless I have to I more or less check my plants every day I come out I check tops I check bottoms of leaves I just I, I spend time with my plants all right and that's a big key to success in gardening is spending the time with your plants every day check them out every day uh, plants actually talk uh, without saying anything so they will tell you everything that's going on with them if you pay attention um, they will tell you when things are going wrong before it's too late if you pay attention okay you have to pay attention and see what they're saying and you will get to uh, you'll get to know uh, after a while of um, smashing with my hands I'm um, not sure what that was or what bugs that was uh, looks like I might have no, but I may have had a few aphids on there but we were just getting rid of aphids on some of my tomato plants um, last week so uh, um, we usually get hit with the aphids uh, one or two times Right in the beginning of the year, and after that, they're gone. So, um, let's prune this one up here. This is the zucchini. And I want to try to get down as close as I can to the base. Um, just so water don't fill these hollow. And you can see that these, uh, these tubes, these branches are hollow. Okay, and they, that's how they push water up into them. Uh, another thing about zucchini and squash plants, all right, and a lot of people get upset because they think that their squash plants are dying uh, in the midday, especially when it's really hot out. Uh, squash plants have a uh, self-fixing um, uh, thing that they do, which they wilt their leaves uh, in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the daytime when it's hot. Uh, all these leaves will be wilted down um, it looks like the, the, it needs water. Uh, make sure it has enough water, but if it has enough water, don't overwater. Uh, this is just the plant's defensive system against the heat. It pulls all the water out and pushes it down into the roots uh, to keep the roots cool and um, to let they allow the uh, leaves to not, um, I don't want to say perspire. Uh, what is the word? Um, what do plants do? Gosh, I can't remember that word. I'm sorry. It's uh, not perspire, but... <sighs> and it's like they sweat. All right, it's like we perspire, but it, they it's another name. I'll, I'll link it. I'll link it right here. Here it is. <laughs> so uh, they, they will do that. So they save water by doing that. So don't get all upset. All right, We're popping off these bottom leaves here just so it grows more, bigger. Uh, harvesting fruits. All right, let's go into harvesting fruits. I personally love squash and zucchini when they are little and small. All right, I'll be taking this guy here probably tomorrow or the next day. Uh, squash and zucchini grow really fast really fast okay um, I mean like a couple days once you start seeing these fruits 
they'll be ready to eat. Um, I like zucchini and squash before the seeds get really formed and get hard. Um, that way the whole thing is pretty tender and edible. Uh, you can let them grow bigger. Uh, if you do let them grow big, and uh, trust me, after you start getting a ton of these things, uh, you're going to uh, tend to get a little lazy on picking them all the time, and some of them will get bigger than normal way I like them. And what I'll do is I'll bake those, or uh, I'll cut them and scoop out the seeds, and then I'll just uh, eat the rest. I'll cube it up and, you know, either fry it or put it in uh, some soups or whatever, you know, whatever you guys like to eat, zucchini and squash. Uh, we love fried zucchini and squash in here. Uh, we eat it, uh, you know, three, four times a week. Uh, my kids love it. Um, Jen loves it. And uh, none of them ate it before I started growing it. So uh, there you go. There's a pollinator. You can see honeybee in there pollinating. Hopefully he's already been into a male. That's female. And I'll just pollinate this one because it's open just to make sure because this will be our first zucchini all right here's that male all right and you can look hold on let me get the sun Jeez. can't get a good shot of it here I'm about ready to fall down the hill huh. i don't know if you guys can see that pollen on the side let's rip this open There is pollen all down in the bottom of this thing, and it's covering the uh, that big knob right there. Okay, uh, that is, I believe, that's the stamen. Uh, it's called, and um, that has the pollen on it to pollinate the female. So here we go. We're going to take this male. And we're just going to go in. that there's pollen on that and uh, that that's going to close up and this uh, you can see that the um, down in here that the zucchini oh gosh I'm sorry the zucchini is right here so this is the female and this is a male right here this is the male the bloom is the female and you can see that zucchini in there I don't want to break it off so uh, but that's the first zucchini. The squash tend to grow faster. Uh, you'll get squashed quicker than you will the zucchinis. Um, but once the zucchinis kick in, uh, there'll be tons of them, trust me. All right. Um, same thing with cucumbers. Let's go up here with cucumbers. Um, I know this isn't about cucumbers, but uh, cucumbers, same thing. They have male and female um, fruits. This is a male, of course it doesn't have the cucumber on it. And let me see if I can find a female. This plant's pushing out a bunch of male plants right now just because of the, uh, it just started blossoming. Here's a female. Looks like it was pollinated. Hopefully it was pollinated. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, oh here it is. All right, right here. Can you see that little tiny cucumber on there? And that's the female. Uh, that flower is already closed, so hopefully it was pollinated. I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, my biggest pollinators uh, here in Western North Carolina are the ants. All right, the ants pollinate so good, and they do not bother my crops. Uh, they can if they get too big of a colony. You don't want a colony growing in your pots um, or your raised beds. But ants coming from the ground or something like that, uh, they will pollinate your plants really good. And they also aerate the ground soil by digging down in it and stuff uh, like earthworms as well. So ants aren't that bad in your garden uh, as long as they're not causing problems. Uh, and that's just the small little army ants to, um, and the black ants and the red ants and things like that. But if they're fire ants now, 
uh, like if you live down in the Piedmont area, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, stuff like that, when you have uh, the fire ants, uh, I would recommend getting rid of them. Uh, they will light your ass up. So don't don't mess with the fire ants. If you got fire ants, you know all about the fire ants. So get rid of them. Okay. So that's about the squash and the zucchinis. Uh, a couple tips, a couple things about them and how they grow and what to look for. I hope you guys found this um, educating. I hope that you guys learned something on this. You know, this of course is for beginners that don't know anything about squash and zucchini. I know a lot of you guys out there already grow it and uh, you probably already know all this stuff or you already have your own little uh, ways of doing things. If you do things different than me or if I've left anything out that you think that needs to be addressed, please comment below, okay? Comment, we love to hear the comments and uh, I would love to talk to some of you guys about uh, your garden and um, all that good stuff so uh, there's a bunch of older leaves on this one I haven't pruned all these yet so here we are we're gonna prune them out and just take off some of these bottom leaves now remember to only take the bottom leaves and uh, only a few and if you take too many all at once you'll shock the plant send it into stress a little bit and uh, if that's not good you'll just slow down the progress all right, so, uh, yep, that's the squash and zucchini 101 for you guys. Like I said, hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with another one, guys. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.